So my name is Nia Javon Andrews and I am a writer. That's where it starts. I am a writer who decided to take my career in writing and use it in communications and use it in publishing my own digital online magazine that I started back in 2010. <laughs> well, the idea started in undergrad, probably 2007, but I executed it in 2010. And let's see, I just like to call myself a writer. That's what I, <laughs> that's how I always acknowledge my gift. Um, I always believe that our gifts come from above, come from God, and we there's a, a line in the Bible that says that in the Bible that says that our gifts will make room for us. And I use my gift to make room for myself in different areas of communications in writing and publishing and content development and all of that stuff. So that's the gist of who I am. I'm a mother first. <laughs> I'm a mother first. And I'm not a wife. I'm, I'm, I'm a single mother. And you'll, if you read the book, you'll get a gist of what that journey has been like. But aside from that, I am just a soul sister. <laughs> Who love, I love community. I love people. I love helping people. I love connecting with people. And I like to drink bourbon which is one of my next business adventures. So As Thyself by Nia is a book that I started back in 2014 and I never really completed it until now. Um, I knew that when I started the book and I said this early on, even in the book, I said that I knew that I didn't have a complete story. So people would ask me, when are you gonna write a book? When are you gonna write a book? And I would just be like, um, I don't know. And I don't know why they would ask me that. I don't have like a profound story into life. I guess it's when I was becoming a Christian or when I was learning about Christianity, the religion of Christianity, um, I was, just reading a lot of the Bible and understanding the Bible. And I would just share things that um, was just wisdom. So I think that people probably, when they were paying attention during that journey, that they uh, thought maybe I had something to say, but I was just learning, really. I was growing my relationship with God, getting closer to understanding, my, not even myself, just understanding, like I said, a lot of the religion that goes with Christianity. So, um, yeah, I was just like, okay. But since I'm a writer, I always wanted to write a book. I thought my first book would be a fiction novel because I, I do have a pretty good imagination <laughs> and I do pay attention a lot to people. And so people become characters to a writer and it's just interesting. So I thought that would be my first book. I'm 38 years old. So I never thought it would take me this long to to even publish my first what I feel is complete piece of work. But life happens. 38 came quick. And now I'm just like, oh, crap, I may have some stuff to talk about now <laughs> since it's like somewhat of a memoir. So it's a memoir, kind of. It's a memoir journal. So it is a tool actually to help people self-evaluate. And it is something, like I said, I've been working on since 2014 and a lot has happened in my life since 2014. And so I just added a lot of that into, into my memoir, which I think completed it. My last seven years was the completion that I needed 2014, 14, 7, 7, 7 years, 20, 20, 21, 
Seven times three is 21. Seven years is what it took to complete. <laughs> Look at God, seven is the number of completion. I just put that two and two together. I just put that together on camera. Like I had not acknowledged that before prior to this moment. <laughs> Look at God. Anyway, that's amazing. Anyway, I, um, I'm i taken aback a little bit by that. But so I started the book and I knew it would be, the book would take me through a journey. I knew that writing this book would take me through feelings and emotions and experiences that I had to relive and you know ups and downs and trials and tribulations and figuring out me and having to hold a mirror up to myself and say girl you ain't right in this area you need to fix yourself in this area you need some correcting in this area you need to mend a relationship over here you need to go and talk to this person like i knew it was going to be a healing journey because you know black folks don't like therapy right we're getting better, better at it. And I think that's a really good thing. We all need somebody to talk to. But I think when you journal your thoughts down and you give yourself the, the opportunity to feel what you're burying and suppressing, that it's easier to go to therapy. Because then you can go with a little bit of an understanding and there's no real shock value when they unpack. You know, you're not at the therapist like drowning in tears because you didn't realize all these things about yourself. So I just wanted to generate a tool to help myself personally and to help other people help themselves. And I just have to say that I call it a self-love journey. And nowadays, when we talk about self-love, people always attribute it to wanting to get better so you can be chosen by a mate so that you can find a mate, so you can find your significant other. I don't, I didn't go into, actually when I started writing this book or when I put it out in the beginning, I thought I was with the person I was gonna be with for a good portion for the rest of my life, you know? I, I thought I was with that person. So when I started it, I wasn't even thinking, I was just thinking about how I can become a better person for myself, for that relationship, for children, you know, for my family. I was thinking about just being a better me. And, and singleness, whether you're in a relationship or single, I think that that is the core of, of, of the work, is just becoming a better person, period. Not for a particular relationship or anything, just period, just being a better person. Because relationships, friendships, family, they're going to have their ups and downs. And when, when you're a solid, when you have a solid foundation, your heart is good, your thoughts are good, you can work through those things. You can work through hard times. You can work through a lot of the things that keep us divided, I think. So the, 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 the self-love journey for me is not to, to get something out of it. It's to be, just to be, to exist, to go through life with a little bit more understanding than you had, <laughs> you know, the day before, and then the day before that, and then the day, you know, each day you get better and better and better. So it's a self-love journey. And even when you're married, even when you are in a relationship or whatever, you still should be working on your self-love journey. It never ends because every day, you know, you're a new person. Every day you're a new person, so you have to love yourself again and again and again and over and over and over. Like, I gained 15 pounds. How I feel about me? You know, those types of things. You know, we, we go through all kinds of things in life. Sickness, loss, you know, all that. So we just have to continuously learn to love ourselves, and it's a journey. started and I talk about relationships. <laughs> I talk a good portion about relationships um, and the breakdown of my relationships and what the root cause was on my side. I can't evaluate anyone else, but on my side, what, what the root cause was, what my decision making, where my decision making came from in the instances. And I always say, um, I am not 
one who experienced a lot of uh, just horrible trauma. You know, just like there are so many young girls whose stories are rooted in molestation and abuse and things like that. And I, I wasn't I, that I don't have that experience. I don't have that story. But I do have the story of a little girl whose heart had been broken and who had I, I realized when I was writing my book, something that I had not. It was a revelation for me and it was a really deep revelation. You know, we talk about having a broken heart. And the reason that this came to me is because I was just wondering, how do I walk away from like situations where I was really involved with the person and loved them, wanted to be with them, saw myself spending the rest of my life with them, but I walk away like it didn't happen. Like that is a horrible thing. You know, people want to see that you had some type of impact you know, they had some type of impact on your life. And I just walked away often. Each each breakup, I just was like, oh, okay, <laughs> moving on. And I'm just like, God, what is that? How how do I, because I love them, I, I have the feelings, but I don't express it the way that, you know, women typically express a heartache, a breakup, and I was just sitting there pondering on that thought. And it came to me that the womb that I was created in, my mother's womb, uh, was connected to a broken heart. So I was created in broken heartedness. Like my mom lost her mom, you know, right when I, when she was pregnant with me, uh, my mom was pregnant. I believe she was pregnant when she lost her mom. And I, I, I think that I, I remember a picture where she was uh, pregnant and I think it was the day of my grandmother's funeral. So I was born into that. And I was not only born into that, I was in the womb developing in that brokenness. And so people say that, you know, women are strong. And the thing that builds our strength is really uh, when we go through adversity, when we go through hard times. And just knowing that my being was cultivated in such a tragic moment for a woman. And I was like, that's where it comes from. And then I, my grandfather passed away. I, I wrote, I talked about this in the book. My grandfather, who was like my father, uh, present like my father, loving, caring, protecting, like my, you know, like a father. He was, I always say, like my father, because he was like like a father to me. And he suddenly died when I was seven, and so I have these experiences from birth that was tragic trauma and you when it comes to death it just teaches you death teaches you to keep going and to move on so what being born into that and then experiencing death of a loved one at such a young age and having to move on with my life from a child like a little child that's when we're shaped you know, that's when we are learning about life. That's when we understand how this thing works. You know, I get to adulthood and go through things that a typical girl, that, you know, a typical girl goes through and is heartbroken and is down. And here I am back to life, like, boop, oh well. <laughs> and I just realized that those early, early moments really shaped this person inside of me that can just move on from difficult times, heartbreak, disappointment. And I'm still trying to figure out if that's a good thing or not, but I talk about that in the book. And that was so important for me to understand about myself and for other people, 
you know, to know that they are coming to a situation with somebody who, you know, what type of person are you and what you deal with? Because if you have a hard time with people who like will walk away, then I'm not the girl for you. <laughs> <laughs> because some guys, some people are flip at the mouth and you know they'll say things and they'll test you like because most girls they need that connection they need they need to be connected to somebody or they need to feel wanted and sometimes kept and guys I've learned over the years kind of take advantage of that and so they'll play games and act like they don't want you, you know, just that the, their ego games, their egotistical games. And I'm just like, okay, bye. <laughs> Fine then. So, I mean, I just believe that doing our work is so relevant and so important to understanding who we are for every relationship every situation and also knowing and understanding what God has to work with. We pray to God for things all the time and, you know, get frustrated when we don't get them and we don't, uh, things don't show up when we want them to show up, but we have to understand what God is working with, you know, when it comes to who we are. You know, I talk about financial decisions that I made. It goes it like it's truly a memoir. It goes through my journey and how you treat yourself and your finances is a reflection of who you are on the inside. And I went through a period in my life where I got rid of everything, like shoes, clothes, all that. I just got rid of it. I didn't want to have nothing to do with anything materialistic at this point in my life. I've changed back a little bit, not the person on the inside, but just desiring materialistic things. Uh, but I was just like, I don't want none of this stuff. I just want to be like naked, not literally, but no labels, no nothing that people could use to define me. What I learned in that is people define you regardless. You know, people are going to label you regardless. I would show up with my natural hair and just like some regular leggings and t-shirt and people all, they label you as something. So you're going to be labeled anyway. So you're going to be labeled anyway. You may as well do what you like, but do what you like with your finances in order and being good to yourself financially. That's so important. God can't bless you if he can't trust you. And God wants to trust you with the things that he blesses you with. And I talk about that and, you know, leaving my job and having to go back to work and making financial decisions as a single mother. I talked about all that stuff and journey through that, which was uh, probably that was probably the, probably the easiest thing for me to talk about. <laughs> That was an easy one. It's the emotional stuff that you find out about yourself that's so difficult to to digest and to talk through. One chapter, I talked about relationships with other women and how it was hard for me to have friendships. And I just, I couldn't understand why I, I just didn't get it. I did not get why I have women in my family. I was comfortable with with girls. I didn't grow up with a sister. I had my brother, but I had cousins. And I just had always had a hard time having relationships with females. And so I kind of sift through that and trying to figure that out. I have my good girlfriends that, you know, I love to death to this day. Kelly, Georgia, Valencia, Carolyn. My homegirls, I love them. And then my new girls, Helen and uh, Tiffany, all these girls that I'm close to. Well, I think I'm close to my girl, <laughs> Rashida, who I haven't talked to in a while. And, and my homie, my new one, my Cameroonian girl, Ursula or Sandra. I don't know what we're calling you these days, girl. But, you know, I, I cultivate these long lasting relationships and all of these people I've been friends with for a very long time. 
other than the, the new ones, and or I would consider myself myself friends with them. So I know how to cultivate relationships, but there was always something that I would meet new girls and it wouldn't go clickish and I would keep my distance and then, you know, they would get catty. And I just didn't understand that. Like, I like women, like, in a friendship way. Like, let's be cool. We don't have to be friends, but, you know, let's be girl, let's be, you know, girlfriends. Let's be cool, sister, you know, and that type of dynamic. That was hard for me to really navigate through. And I I learned how I played a part in that and just women, how we are and what's rooted in us with rejection and abandonment, how that play, plays a part in it too. So I had to address those issues with myself, find out how I was isolating people and shutting people off for reasons that really stem back to what I talked about before, just moving on with life. And a lot of people don't like that. So uh, I, I just addressed a lot of issues that I think are buried behind the deeper stuff, the deeper wounds that, that, that people have. Um, because none of us are perfect and the tragedies of life get in the way of really us kind of perfecting our imperfections. And I think God wants us to tell these stories too. God wants us to be uh, conscious of some of these issues as well, because I think these little issues create bigger ones. And so I just, I was digging into that and, you know, figuring out like the jealous spirit that women have and where it, co where it comes from and why we treat each other the way that we do in jealousy and 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 I, I you know I don't like it I don't like the div divisiveness that women have the competitiveness that women have with one another it breaks my heart and you know it's sad because <laughs> it's unnecessary we've come so far we've come too far to think that we have to compete the way that we do. And it's so many opportunities out there for women to come together, to work together and to create together and to be great um, amongst each other without competing, you know? And men take advantage of that, sisters. You know, men take advantage of the fact that we compete, pit us against each other, fight, and they do whatever they want to do. You know, and that's not that's not what our roles are. Our roles are not to be here competing. <sighs> you all know the story, <laughs> the story of what we shouldn't be here doing and all that. I don't have to. I don't have to go deep into that, but we have we have to do better. So hopefully, like that chapter where I talk about that stuff in my book, hopefully it, you know does some help in waking us up with the divisiveness and the division that that we partake in and the jealousy. But you know what I I said I I I was talking to a friend and he was saying how women do the yes girl, yes girl, you doing that, yes. And I was just like, yeah, we have to do that. You know, we have to do that with one another because when you see a girl doing that yes sister giving another sister her props for whatever whether it's whether it's work a business looking beautiful whatever it is when you see another woman giving another woman props like that that's a good girl and i i say that that's a good girl because she has a consciousness and she knows that that compliment is for that woman just as much as it is for her. Because we fight back so many internal feelings because we are in a society that's constantly telling us what how we should look, what we should be, what we shouldn't do, what we should do. 
And now we have this whole entirely new vocal group of men who listen to Brother Kevin Samuels, <laughs> who are telling us, you know, now that we are this modern woman and this, this and that, and men want you this way and you should be this way. And <sighs> he has really awakened a beast with, <laughs> with his commentary. But we have to listen to all of that and still navigate through this life being our best selves. Because listen, this is one thing for sure. We are not going back. We are not going back to being in the house, solely taking care of kids, solely dependent on a man. A man. That's just not, we're not going back to that. Those days are over. And evolution evolving is a good thing. You have to evolve with times. No one can say that past generations got everything right. What we do is take the good and take the now and fuse them together. You cannot say that education, establishing an income, for yourself and doing all these things is a bad thing for a woman unless you are a controlling manipulative man and your ego is happy being that that's the only way that you can say that with confidence especially if you have daughters you know i was raised by a strong black woman but i was influenced by a lot of black men and my uncles are the ones who taught me a great deal of the things that I know, you know, when it comes to taking care of myself, when it comes to, I remember when I was thinking about going to get my law degree and expanding my career. The first person that I had this conversation with was my uncle. I've always like looked to men when I have had a problem with my daughter's father, I went to my father. I have always had a relationship and a bond with men where I can get solid, good, solid advice and move forward. And good men raise their daughters to stand alone. And a good man can see that and know that he has a wife. Um, anybody that's looking for something to control is not, is not their heart, your heart, their heart isn't good. So uh, I don't understand that foolery. <laughs> really don't. I don't get it. So I don't like to engage in those conversations. Um, I don't. I don't like to. I like to uh, really fill up on positivity. And good people are just good people. And they. Typically, you don't see them sitting around ridiculing, criticizing. They're too busy being good. So good people tend to find each other, but there's a lot of people who need help in between. And you'll run into them, and they'll stop you. <laughs> and you'll probably spend time with them. But life fixes it. Life definitely fixes it. So getting to a place where I was comfortable telling my stories wasn't hard for me. I, I'm a transparent person. I'm a truth teller and a truth seeker. I like to put it all out there. You know, if you ask me, I'll tell you. I'm just that type of person. I don't, I don't feel like that I have to hide anything because Somebody has the truth. Somebody's going to be willing to tell it. So I don't like hide behind a lot of lies and, and untruths. And I don't do that. That to me, to me, liars are cowards. I truly feel that way. I feel like liars are weak. Liars are cowards. You know, like you can't stand before a person and tell your truth. What are you afraid of? Who are you afraid of? 
I can tell you my lowest, that dirtiest secret about myself. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I, I don't know what it could be, but whatever that is, I can say it and be okay with it because the person who's going to, who's a, uh, can judge me in heaven already knows. <laughs> I can't hide it from him, you know. Whatever that secret may be, I can't hide it from him. So if I'm ever addressed with having to do that, I just be like, hey, that's what it is. Now you know. I I don't get into uh, lying, and I'm, I'm a very transparent person, and I can. So that that was easy for me telling the stories of my life. You know, it is what it is. Like I said, I don't have any dark, dark days like that, you know, where molestation or rape or abuse, physical abuse. I went through a little psychological manipulation, which is abuse in uh, one relationship. But other than that, you know, but, you know, that was I always say this. The crazy thing about that relationship is that I call that my Job moment where I feel like heaven was testing me. You know, I felt like I met a person who every check mark that I had for myself, he checked off. You know, but he had that other side to him where that you, as they say, it's a thin line between love and hate. And it truly is. Like, it's a real thin line between love and hate. <laughs> it just takes one thing when a person, that's how you know somebody loves you or loved you. If they can or wanted to or whatever, you know, I feel. Because hate, you can't get love without, you can't get hate without having to once love somebody. And 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 someone does and says something that changes the trajectory of that being possible for you. I think that 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 can turn into hate. You know, that's why you see divorced people go through such ugly divorces because there was an investment there. There was an emotional investment. You know that they had there and. Yeah, if, it, if they can just walk away and it be nothing like go on with your life. Probably not, you know, <laughs> probably wasn't too deep. But um, I say that that relationship was my Job moment because I think that the test was me straying away from God. You know, I was, I, sh I always say that I should not have been in a relationship that didn't end in marriage at that point in my life. Because I knew that the end result to being involved with somebody and I knew, you know, I knew all the important stuff. I had all the information. I had all the knowledge uh, when it comes to the foundation of a relationship. I know I knew important qualities and, and, and what makes a husband and what would make me a wife. I, took, I had taken classes. I had been through premarital classes before because I was engaged prior to. So, you know, I, sh I should have known, you know, <laughs> but I think that it was, it was a good solid test for me. And the thing about that relationship, it really, really, really put me closer to God because I talked to God prior to getting into the relationship. I prayed for that man every day and understanding I pray daily. And I think the reason that I didn't get lost in the chaos of that relationship is because of my standing with God. And I think I graduated. <laughs> I honestly do. I think that even though a lot of mess happened, I think I walked away from that relationship hurt. I was hurt. But I think God was proud of me, I believe, because, you know, uh, my commitment to him was true. 
I didn't throw God away for a man or a relationship or hopes that something would happen. My commitment to him was was true. My commitment to God was solid, you know, and I proved it. And I felt like I proved it. And, uh, you know, I the bad behaviors in it, like pre sex before marriage and all of that, that it, it all took place, it all happens, and those are the soul ties that keep us connected to people when thinking that we have to fight for something that's truly not good for us. But uh, even with all of that, God really held my hand through the through that time. And, you know, I think I almost drove my brother to his <laughs> to his deathbed with that relationship. I think I drove my brother crazy. Poor baby. I love my brother. But I really think that I drove him insane with that one. Sorry, Charin. <laughs> oh, that's my boy. I love that boy. But uh, I think that God knew with that. Like I, I was serious about him. Uh, regardless of what I was choosing, God. I was choosing my destiny. I was choosing being a servant to the kingdom, uh, even with all of my mess in it. And, you know, even in it, my hopes was that the person I was with would come with me. I was hoping like, man, God, just change him, you know, turn him around, give him what he needs, you know, let him see that this way is the best way, God. <laughs> but it just didn't work that way. It is what it is, and it's it, it's still unresolved, you know. Um, but it is what it is. Life has to go on. But uh, yeah, that was that was wow. That helped me create just a a, a solid book, though, <laughs> because it really showed me who I am. Like I I have. Uh, you know, I have a little bit of a story that goes with that, and and I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it. Here it is.